Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the other top eight game we prepared for you. So we were able to stream two top eight games, um, so you can watch the different brackets uh, all together. And in this game we have uh, Stefan Weber against Rosa Klint. Um, Stefan plays a very interesting deck. Uh, he plays Duskmane Necrozma, but without something like Magnezone. He plays Registeel and he plays the uh, Sogaleo Prism. And then uh, Mew from Fates Collide. So, um, a very different approach. We've seen something similar in Mal Malmö, I think. Yes, yeah, From Scott Alessandro Cremasoli, um, yeah. for example, he played it. And yeah, now we see it here in top 8. Uh, Rosa is playing the um, Gardevoir Zorak deck, which we've already seen. And yeah, let's just, just imp jump into it. Yeah, I think we're in for a uh, pretty interesting game here. Obviously, um, the metal deck being able to hit theory for weakness and um, you know, just be able to pretty much overrun that Gardevoir there. However, Rosa does have access to that inherent draw power that Zoroark has, as well as being able to hit those Dust Mains for a lot of damage when all that energy is stacked on them. Yeah, the weakness is probably a big problem. I don't know for sure how you would approach this matchup. Probably you would be kind of forced to only pretty much use Zoroark because of the metal weakness you're also facing some problems with other cards, but on the other hand, of course, um, Dust Mane Necrozma deals like 200, 230 with the attack, I'm pretty sure. 220. 200. With, yeah, meteors. Yeah, so yeah. that's still enough to knock out a Zorak anyway, so probably the Gardevoir doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I've never played this matchup, it's also quite an unusual deck to have, uh, so let's see how Rosa can adapt to this. Yeah, obviously as well, the good thing to keep in mind here is obviously that Face Collide Mew is designed to be able to use that attack of uh, Dust Mane Necrozma there. However, uh, Zoroark has resistance to Psychic by minus 20 as well, so that takes it down to 200. So without a choice band, that Meteor Tempest isn't actually going to be able to knock out a Zoroark if a Mew is using it. Yeah, exactly. But on the other hand, the Mew is also probably even more useful to use Sogaleo Prism's attack without actually having the Sogaleo active. So it doesn't get damaged, um, you can attack more than once with the attack. The prison Pokemon are kind of weird to play because you have, if it gets knocked out, it's put into the lost zone and the attack is really good to use. So if your um, uh, if your Sorgaleo gets knocked out, you can't use the attack anymore. This is why also the Fates Collide, Mew being uh, quite useful. But as we've seen already, there are a lot of Pokemon with Psychic Weakness in this format, like Buzzwool and um, Mew EX, which yeah, kind of suffer from Mew being able to copy stuff like Registeel or um, yeah, different Pokemon. Yeah, I think uh, the interesting thing to look at on the early turns of this game is Rosa was able to actually get off uh, the Bridget naturally. However, one of Azura were a prize. So she wasn't able to just set up a board with only Zorua. She had to go for that Ralts, playing one down from her hand as well. I mean that there are now two Fairy Pokemon on the field. That can easily be knocked out by just an attachment to a Reggie Steel. And then obviously that allows Stefan to start accelerating his board and also taking a knockout. Um, big Sycamore there though, putting plenty of steel in the discard which he wants, but also Guzma and Cynthia. Yeah, so now he has three uh, dark, uh, Metal Energy cards in his discard pile. And he also drops the Sogaleo Prism Star. That is definitely what he wants to see. Really good card. Rosa just making sure what exactly it's doing. Um, it also got a really good attack for four energy cards. Sometimes you are able to use it, um, especially if you actually use Mio Fates Collide to attack. You can stack some energies there. And then, of course, because it only gets 160 damage, the weakness from Gardevoir is actually quite important. Uh, yeah, I think uh, just looking at both players' prizes, um, Rosa's actually prized a puzzle of time, which could be pretty big in this matchup. She's going to probably have her Ralts knocked out early on. Uh, she's going to want to keep her Zoroaks on the field as much as possible. So the fact that one's prized could actually be hurtful. It depends which way she decides to draw her prizes from, but hopefully she gets into that soon so she's able to take advantage of using all of her puzzles. Uh, looking at Stefan's side of things, there is a Guzma prized. Uh, 
He'll need those to make sure he's able to take uh, easy knockouts on the Guard of War. As well as that, uh, we definitely see two Steel Energy in there as well. Uh, it's really important that he hits these Max Elixirs in his deck. And obviously, with a maximum of 14 Metal Energy, some of the discard already, and two in his prizes, there's not that many left in his deck. Yeah, he plays, it, it looks kind of like a Vulcanian deck, uh, without something like Scheme Up to easily just discard the Metal Energy cards. He plays um, the four Max Elixir, he has a lot of Metal Energy cards, he just wants to get them into play. He has Reggie Steel, which is kind of, uh, yeah, not really like the non-GX Vulcanian, but more like the Eveltal, which we've already seen, which was also really good, uh, being just able to deal 30 and attach one. And here, Stefan actually retreating his Mew after he attached the energy to his Prison Star, Solgaleo. Um, already been able to charge up, but his bench doesn't look that amazing um, in terms of Pokemon he can attach energies to. But Solgaleo Prison Star actually can also attach energy to itself once it attacks, so he could potentially use um, the attack. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely an option for him here. I think that the perfect thing for oh i was about to say the perfect thing for him here is to get a dust main across him on board that nest ball allows him to get that option meaning that now obviously solgalay and prism can actually get the energy on that uh, dust main necrozma um looking at our twitch chat though uh, we've had someone ask where are rosa and stefan from yeah so some trivia here rosa is from denmark she won the danish national championship in seniors one or two years ago um yeah two years ago because there was no uh, nationals last year and uh, Stefan is actually from Austria, so uh, with a very German sounding name, good for me, so I can pronounce it perfectly. Um, yeah, Stefan is also, I don't know how long he plays, I think since like 2013 or 14. Uh, he made an impact in like 2015. Uh, I think he was quite high on the rankings uh, kind of regularly. Yeah, but he still uh, enjoys playing. I don't think he plays too many regionals. Um, Rosa also, I don't see her at every event, so I don't think she plays all of them. Um, yeah, but for Stef uh, Stefan, of course, in Czech Republic, it's kind of close to Austria. You can just go by car, and yeah, Rosa probably had a quite a far away. Yeah, I mean, it's always great to come to events, even if you don't come that often. Sometimes you just come to just see some of your buddies that you don't get to see to. Uh, for a, quite a long time obviously that's one of the main reasons i come to events just to hang out i'm not a very good player unfortunately so i don't do too well so day two is normally my hangout day where i get to see all my friends and just chill out and have some fun uh unfortunately for these guys though they've done really well so they have to keep grinding out with these games and obviously hopefully it results in them doing even better so they can be really happy with their weekend yeah, so Rosa's turn now. She played just an Evo Soda for her bench, Zorak. She, it also seemed like she had a Zorak in her hand and debated if she should evolve the active one, which she just did. Um, yeah, now dealing with this Prism Star Solgaleo is kind of weird, but um, also knowing that um, the Dust Name Necrozma's GX attack can deal 250 damage as long as the opponent has less remaining prize cards, which is usually the case in these kind of decks. So you just try to get rid of a lot of energies in the discard pile, then you can attach them, and you just do this until your opponent takes the knockout, then you deal 250. If your opponent isn't able to respond, you deal 220. You can draw a lot of prize cards really quick, and if your setup was well enough, and maybe you hit a mix elixir here and there, then you can overrun your opponent quite fast. So Rosa's in a really uh, weird spot where she kind of needs to knock out the Sogaleo, but she already, she already knows what's going to happen afterwards. Probably she just tries to set up a Gardevoir here as well, to um, have it as fast as possible just as a threat. And like we already said, it doesn't really matter too much if you have the Gardevoir in play or not. Um, the uh, cro yeah, Chroma Impact can still can knock it out easier, but does name you Chrosma, it's the one that's knocked out either way. Yeah, definitely, as well as that, uh, the thing you've got to remember with the Prism Stars attack, however, is the energy stays on it. It just can't attack next turn. So obviously that means that 160 damage, Gardevoir can also knock that out quite easily as well. So it just means that obviously with the Dustmane Necrozma, it is discarding the energy after attacking, which means that 
you know, Gardevoir needs a lot more ramp to be able to one-shot that. Whereas for this 160 HP Pokemon, as much as this HP is really awkward for Zoroark to hit, and might be a problem for uh, Zoroark to knock out, Gardevoir can obviously get into it if he's able to dodge its attack for the early game, should I say. Yeah, and now another trade actually discarding one of the puzzle pieces. Not really what you want to, want to discard, but... Um, discarding only one puzzle piece is often fine because you can still, if you have three puzzles at once, you can uh, actually play um, the first two double puzzles for one puzzle and the cards you need, and then the other two for another thing. She also had one um, puzzle of time in her prize card, which is supposed to be drawn kind of late. So um, we will probably only need see one double puzzle in this game maybe not even uh, one at all and here we see her just doing the 100 chip damage on the Sorgaleo for the turret knockout. Yeah I think that Rose has probably in her first search noticed that one of those puzzles are actually prized so she doesn't mind pitching the other one off just to uh, pretty much see you know I can actually grab that one out of the prizes I can grab this one back at a later point however uh, she didn't really need it. It's pretty much a free trade card as she isn't actually able to use that um, puzzle to do much apart from look at the top three cards in the yeah, deck. And now Stefan's hand isn't looking that amazing. Uh, he plays a Guzma and then just instructs for one. Doesn't get um, doesn't get what he needs, but he draws the uh, Sigma from the press cards if I've seen that correctly. And he did. applying a lot of pressure with his Meteor Impact here. Uh, it, yeah, it looked, uh, that was probably a big swing turn, obviously getting rid of that Zoroark, getting rid of the, the trade ability that it has there that will give uh, Rosa a lot of the tempo that she has in this game. Uh, however, uh, Stefan also drew the Guzma off of his prizes, which will allow him to jump into the Prism Star Solgaleo again to get those energies back out of the discard and onto his Solgaleo um, uh, Dustmane Necrozma. And he will continue to be able to put attacks out every turn with that as long as this Prism Star stays in play. Whether he attaches the energy to keeps that energy on Mew as well, using it that way. However, um, Stefan's in a good spot here where he can continue to output damage and keep doing it. Yeah, Rosa now still no Gardevoir in play, just trading a bit until she goes there. At least. There's no really big threat in Stefan's board. If he has a Guzma, he probably just attack with Mew Fates Collide, getting some energies back. But Mew only um, attacks one energy. Um, yeah, Mew only gives one prize card, so Rosa won't be closer to winning. And if he plays Guzma, the um, Sagario Prism is still only one prize card. So, uh, but we actually see her attacking here, knowing this is the threat right now if uh, Stefan is able to use the attack again this will not look good and now Stefan his only way to get energy in play from this point on is either Max Potion uh, I, I mean either Max Elixir or uh, Reggie Steel. Yeah I think uh, that was a really smart play there from Rosa knowing that the Mew is only able to have access to this attack obviously if the um, Prism Star is in play however by pulling that up into the active knocking it out that uh, Sun's Eclipse attack, uh, not Sun's Eclipse, uh, Rising Star attack essentially isn't able to get energy in play. So that means that Stefan's now left down to his elixirs. However, we know that a lot of his energy are already in the discard. And one is still in the prizes, meaning that there really aren't that many of them in his deck. Yeah, so here we see the Prism Star going into the Lost Zone. <laughs> so uh, you can only play one of them in your deck, but... In most cases, it wouldn't really matter that much because you could still play, for example, to rescue stretcher to always get it back. But the card is a bit too good for that. So whenever it would go to the discard pile, usually it gets put uh, into the lost zone. So cards that can grab things from your discard pile don't have any access anymore. 
Yeah, I really like this new mechanic. It allows for some slightly more powerful cards to be printed that do some really cool intricate things to the game and allow players to pull off some really cool plays and really cool combos. However, I like that it's been capped and sort of kept at bay without breaking the game by having this lost, mo uh, lost zone mechanic. As well as that, uh, we haven't yet got a card in the format that allows you to get cards out of your Lost Zone. I don't know if we'll see one of those in the future. However, it'll be interesting to see how this Lost Zone um, part of the map develops in the future. And to see how many more Prism Stars we get that actually alter the game. Yeah, so if everyone is wondering, um, Stefan actually does not play uh, Gladion. So this is something you would maybe consider playing. Uh, because if your Prism Star... Sogaleo is in your prize cards. You could play Tapu Lele for Gladian, then grab it out there. Um, Stefan opted not to do this, so if the Sogaleo is prized, his game plan is maybe a bit more problematic. He also doesn't play Town Map, so nothing really um, to kind of keep this uh, disadvantage on a, on a lower scale. Yeah, without the Magna Zone here, he really is reliant on his fast. Um, energy acceleration to come from that prison star Solgalea. So I'm quite surprised to see that his uh, list doesn't play anything to make sure that he has that every game. And obviously just to make sure that, you know, it comes into play, it comes into play at the right time. Because obviously if it was in your prizes and you weren't able to draw it um, till later on. Um... Oh, don't worry. Oh, Mew just used Registeel's attack. I thought that he just yeah. attached a second energy no, no. for turn. Like, but it's only 10 damage to... because of the resistance. Yeah, because of the resistance. So um... Usually with Registeel, Turbo Arm only deals 30, minus uh, 20, so 10 damage. That's 200 left for Zorak. I'm pretty sure that's not really important. Um, Stefan's game plan now probably is just let Mew and maybe Registeel get knocked out. Then you can use um, the Jax attack from. Dusk main Necrozma and then attach one extra energy to 220 and win the game this way. So Rosa is probably just hoping for something like a Guzma. In theory, I think if she gets a lot of energy cards, could she actually be able to take the knockout? So if she has three energy, three energy and a six choice in total. Yeah, exactly. So if she's lucky, she can take the knockout here, but even just getting some damage on it would probably do the trick as well. Ultra Ball here, she could uh, get Tapuleta just for Guzma, or she can uh, get a Melo to have the Gardevoir in play, and let's see what she uh, think is more fitting in this situation. Uh, I think earlier she did have the rear candy in hand already, so it does mean if she does grab the Gardevoir, uh, she can put that down straight away. If, a hand, if, if I am correct in saying that the rear candy is there, um, as we said, she does need a Fairy DCE plus Choice Band to actually knock out that... Uh, just main Necrozma on the bench, that could actually be really big for her, taking out Stefan's big threat, and obviously meaning that then he would have to develop another one of those. Four energy is quite high to ask, especially when he doesn't have a high amount of acceleration from his Prism Star Solgaleo, and of course those Max el Elixirs getting less and less effective with the more energy in the discard. Yeah, also Stefan didn't play an N for I think two turns, so Rosa's hand should be pretty stacked after all of these trade abilities. Um, here we see the Tapu Lele actually coming down, uh, searching the deck for a supporter card. Um, yeah, like we already mentioned, Guzma seems to be a really good play here. She can just grab the Dustmany Cosma active, switch the two Zoroarks, which probably shouldn't do anything uh, too much, and then just get some damage. Or, if she uses tr trade twice now and gets kind of lucky, <laughs> she can even take the one at knockout. Uh, so yeah, let's wait what she's doing here now. Uh, we see and one trade discarding a Feral City. Um, like you already said, I'm also fairly sure there is a rare candy in her hand already. A second and trade, and I think we saw the second puzzle there in hand as well. So that gives us some more options again. Um, so a bunch of hand cards. Um, yeah, we will probably just have to wait how good the hand actually is because we can't see the whole thing. But like already mentioned. Just having the Guzma is still fine in this situation because Stefan's board position isn't looking too amazing. Yeah, I think even here, um, dragging up something with a high retreat cost like Oranguru here 
could also be an option just to stall Stefan out a little bit. His hand wasn't looking too strong there at the end of his last turn. So by pulling up that Oranguru, she might even be able to trap it there for a little bit longer, allowing him to set up a board a little more, set up a Guard of War, or even two Guard of War, and put him on a lot of pressure on Stefan. Yeah, so Rosa is really taking her time now to consider what she's doing. I'm not entirely sure uh, what there is to think about. Of course, her hand is really big, and she hadn't played a supporter yet. She only tr traded twice. Um, or traded two times. <laughs> it's really hard to pronounce. Um, yeah. On Stefan's side, if the Necrozma goes into the active spot, he can't use Sun Eclipse GX because uh, Rosa still has um, five prize cards left. Stefan already took a knockout on a Zoroark earlier, so he has four prize cards, uh, which means his only way to take a knockout is. Media Tempest and Rose actually not and using the uh, Guzma, just taking out the Mew, throwing one prize card. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Sun Eclipse is still not able to attack. Um, one extra prize has to be um, taken by Rosa. Stefan now plays an N, so shuffling this huge hand away um, for Rosa now only with four hand cards. And Stefan get get even can get even more damage on the Zorak. Um, Potentially attaching one energy to its um, dust name Necrozma. He could also attach it to Mio EX or even Tapu Lele um, to just have an option. Maybe if the Registeel can attack twice, it has 130 HP, so potentially it stays in play. Maybe with something like a uh, Fighting Fury Belt here or there, he can take um, like a one hit knockout with something later. But Stefan actually going for the really aggressive way here. Just taking another big knockout with Meteor Tempest. He's not playing to use Sun Eclipse anymore this game. And now Rosa, only one trade left, four hand cards. Not looking too good in terms of the board. And now Stefan is um, in a weird position again. He has nothing really on his board, but he has Reggie Steel. In theory, he can attack twice, maybe even three times with uh, Reggie Steel and Miu combination. And Rosa only being able to take one knockout uh, one prize card for each knockout still is kind of on the um, short side of the lever um, just because her last turn didn't apply too much pressure on Stefan's field and now she's left with a really problematic board position yeah as well as that I can see a guard of war sitting in her hand there um, obviously she would have put it down and she had the rare candy by now however it's really a case now where Stefan's pulled ahead however his board state is lacking quite a lot um, it'll be interesting to see here how he's going to power up this Dust Mane Necrozma. Obviously, we haven't seen too many Max Elixirs used. As much as they've become weaker, Stefan's deck is starting to get a lot thinner. Therefore, these Elixirs can now become effective in the case of him being able to just get them on board now as a final power up for Dust Mane Necrozma. However, it's really, really, really essential that he um, draws some cards that he's able to use off this N to 2, because otherwise his board state... He's pretty shallow, and he's not going to be able to do very much. Rosa obviously drawing up to four. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be too much in there. Um, I can see a field blower, and that's about it. She's really looking to get a Guard of War into play here to start applying some pressure uh, with a high damage output, because these Zoroark's only able to take two shots, or even in this case, three shots. Um, yeah, she hasn't used trade yet, so she can still get two extra cards here, discarding a Zoroark GX. Um... Her head is still looking, not looking really amazing. Um, yeah, the dust name, the Necrozma also with 190 HP. If it gets 80 damage now, Rosa would need a full band or a choice band next turn to um, take the knockout. But it looks like, yeah, we just see the 80 damage. The 80. Stefan does need some way to retreat. In theory, even if he has a Guzma, she, he also applies a lot of pressure on uh, Rosa because then, um, yeah. He can knock out one of the Rals, and then if Rosa doesn't evolve next turn, but Stefan actually just attacks an energy, uses Instruct, and that's it. Now Rosa's turn again. This and really hurting. Rosa making sure what is the second attack of Reggie Steel doing. In theory, could deal 90 damage. So with this Floatstone attached, it only caps at 90. So it could now, deal. Now, are we sure that Stefan doesn't have a Reg Ice in his deck to boost that by 30 damage? Oh. <laughs> uh, it's not on the deck list. Maybe he can get it from somewhere. I hope he doesn't. Um, yeah, but Registeer probably only using Turbo Arm. 
Rosa needs, uh, if she has a choice band, she can deal um, 110 damage, so that would be exactly enough for the knockout, exactly or enough, potentially yeah. either a Bridget or just two bench Pokemon as well. Um, there are already, I think, two Zoruas Zor Zor in the discard pile, and one looks to be prized, so even a Bridget might probably not be able to fill the bench. Not entirely sure of uh, how the discard pile looks like. Yeah, there's definitely two uh, Zoruas in the discard, obviously. Um, Stefan knocking out two Zoroark. The one's prized because obviously she had to bridge it for only two of them early game. Uh, she's going for another energy attachment here on Rolls. I think I can see that rear candy in her hand again, but again missing the other piece to get Gardevoir out. She's missed that a number of times so far uh, within this round. She's really got to get it out soon though because she's falling behind. There is the Ultra Ball as well. If there is the rear candy in hand, she could get Gardevoir out this turn. However, is it still correct? There's not that many energy on Stefan's side of the board. So therefore, Gardevoir struggling to put out as much damage as it was perhaps a couple of turns ago. Yeah, Rosa, it looks like she has Ultra Ball and Dry Candy in her hand. Um, one thing which could actually um, potentially be quite nice is also Gallade uh, to get out of this weird position. Um, so this is also something she might keep in mind. But here we see the Rare Candy. And the Gardevoir, Gardevoir, straight away. She can use uh, Secret Spring. First, um, she's still able to attach a double colors energy card, and that would also be another way to take the knockout here. Retreating the active Zorak for Gardevoir, then five energy in total, um, together with the opponent's energy. Uh, right now, it only deals 90 damage, so 20 short for the knockout. Uh, either fair energy or double colors energy card here should be enough if I'm not mistaken. However, I think the smarter play here for Rosa would be to just take a knockout here with a choice band on that Zoroark, if she can manage to get it. Keeping that Gardevoir on the bench, meaning that it's not in the active for him to just simply move up his Registeel and um, being able to just attach an energy in a choice band, able to take his last two prizes. Yeah, on that sure. If, if, you, if you have the choice between Gardevoir and Zoroark, just attacking with Zoroark, there's also nothing really threatening to the Zoroark um, as well. Here we see an Ultra Ball. If she has another Lele left, she can get either, I don't know how many, uh, Professor Sycamore. She has in her deck list um, um, let yeah, me just, only yeah, one only which the she one. discarded earlier with trade, so now either N or uh, Symphia. In N here, you could already tell Stefan's hand probably not looking too much, uh, just getting here a Symphia. So now Rose has a lot of options. She either needs an energy card or a choice band or another bench Pokemon, um, and she still has one trade left. Yeah, I think she is in a good position here. Obviously, already taken two prizes. Uh, she can really start moving up tempo on that Gardevoir for now. If she gets a choice ban for a Zoroark, she can knock out this Dustmane Necrozma, and then next turn, actually Guzma up that Tapu Lele, Secret Spring, attach, and then she can probably knock that out. Yeah, so we see a Mono Puzzle on her hand. Um, if she didn't really get all of it, she could actually maybe just play the one. Um, she should know by now that there is one of the prize cards, um, so maybe she plays in a way that she can draw it. She has Rare Candy, she actually yeah. has Galade, she, she can attack with Galade, with uh, Sensitive Blade. She so, can indeed, and that so would be she huge. She can still Premonition tr and then trade, so uh, this is really good here, drawing the Candy Galade. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned I think at the beginning of the turn that using Galade here would also be quite nice. Just Premonition and Sensitive Blade also has a lot of and HP. And the Premonition here, here the shows premonition. us, um, they show us like the good quite man. good cards, um, yeah really cool. Also, after using Premonition and then Trade, you still know which card is on top of your opponent's deck. So, if your opponent doesn't play N or anything else, but shuffles your own deck. When you promote your active Pokémon, you have like extra information, because it's like you draw first and then promote. Because you know the top card of your deck, which is also always like a little thing to do. And just having like a late and Zorak in the same deck is really good. Also, Sensitive Blade deals a lot of damage um, in the Zorak deck almost impossible to not have any kind of supporter um, at some point and here we see Rosa just retreating here for actually the very best option sensitive blade knockout sensitive drawing blade. two prize cards absolutely excellent there from Rosa she'll be really happy with that draw there for the rear candy Gallade obviously Gallade only being a one prize attacker as well so even if Stefan does manage to get a dust main out and all the energy on it without a Guzma he's only going to be able to take one more prize here towards his last two and Rosa, all she needs here is a few attachments on that Gardevoir and a Guzma, which was in that premonition right there. And she's in set ways. However, Stefan drops that 
Kabali in there. Yeah, so um, in theory, he can actually... I think he can win this turn if he gets really lucky and has Guzma, Max Elixir and Energy. So, um, not sure if this is something he can do. He has the energy. Oh, Orange this doesn't look like a perfect hand. But the Cobalion is still a threat. Um, so, pretty sure it has like 120 HP. Could be one it knocked out by either the um, Zorak or Gallade. Uh, an end coming down, putting both players down to two hand cards. That's also pretty big as well, because it does mean that if Rosa did put that Guzma on the top of her deck, allowing her to obviously take that knockout next turn, she's not going to have uh, easy access to that anymore. Obviously, she can Premonition again this turn, hoping that those same really strong cards are on the top there. However, she's going to be unhappy that she can't get that card she put on the top of her deck. Yeah, but but still, it's, I think it's quite fine. Um, now the Registeel deals 30, attacks the energy to the Cobalion. And Rosa, she draws three cards now, so two for the end, then one of the top deck. And then she still has the top five cards, which she can rearrange, so it's kind of like you have eight cards to kind of choose from, uh, which is really crazy. And the uh, Cobalion, because it only has 120 HP, um, the Gardevoir even is now able to take the knockout. So if you just have a, uh, a Guzma, then still all looking quite good for her. Um, of course, if he has a bench Pokemon and a double colors energy card, she can just take the knockout with Zorak, which would be better because it isn't um, weak. And then I don't really see any option for uh, Stefan here, but the Cobalion is able to yeah, take an easy knockout. So Rosa really needs the Guzma at this point. Yeah, and we see the Fairy Energy come down on Gardevoir. In order for her to be able to take her last two prizes, she needs a DCE a Choice Band and a Guzma in order to take two on the Tapu Lele. However, as you just mentioned, perhaps knocking out the Cabalion also isn't that bad of an option here, just taking away that final threat. Um, it's really important here though that now that she's played support, as she is able to actually knock out that Reggie Steel. Uh, 130 damage there from Sensitive Blade and Stefan's then going to hope to have to draw a Guzma off of his two cards. And now, yeah, really big turn. He draws two, draws a third one. If he can get an energy or we see a Nest Ball and, and a, a Fighting, fighting Fury Belt. The Nest Ball is stuck in his hand, but he can attach the Fighting Fury Belt. So now there are at least four cards, so two additional, which he can uh, draw. Now Rosa is with her Premonition ability. She taking... sees the Choice Band. She definitely throws that to the top of the deck, knowing that that's pretty important. We haven't seen the two cards in her hand yet. Does she have all the pieces she needs? Well, even if like if she has Guzma, she can't win this turn. So it's still it's really running down to the wire. Wire here, um, yeah. It's basically just all players draw some cards, and then we can uh, see who the winner is. I don't really think there is some crazy decision uh, to be made here, unless I miss something really big. Um, the Cobalion is a one-off. No, I don't believe um, and so. And here we see Rosa. Drawing another prize card, Stefan just putting new active end. I did a mistake. Yeah, now of course after the knockout, the nest ball is not a um, so-called dead card anymore. I think it's only one or two Guzma left in Stefan's deck, so not that likely. He might decide to just not put anything down uh, if it's a third type of lane. Top deck still. Sycamore by the looks of things, though. I think I can see that in his hand. Yeah, I mean a Sycamore doesn't really help too much here. It would be kind of a. It's actually. Yeah, not too good of a top deck here because then this means one less card. And Stefan actually playing Nest Ball but not taking anything because he can still use Tapu Lele for a Guzma, uh, which he plays four of. Um, there is also at least one Ultra Ball still left in the stack, so by not taking it here, he has a higher chance. Let's see if he gets it. Oh, he only gets an Energy and the Professor Sycamore. So he has to play Sycamore and now he actually needs to get his... Um, it's just mainly cross my bag and just put it active because almost every Pokemon will potentially get one hit knocked out if she, if he just puts the Tapolela active. It doesn't have too much HP to stand one hit. Um, now he's checking <coughs> all of the cards. Um, what um, is in there really problematic and I don't really think there is something like bubble or a weird attack which he, he can use to stall out the game even longer. Uh, weird thing is, is I can see a rescue stretcher in his hand there I'm pretty sure. Um, Odd that he didn't put the dust main back down and put that in the active. Obviously, with the highest amount of HP there, being able to survive a lot more. And here we see Ultra Ball. Is there something we missed which he could use? Um, 
and I think yeah he was like kind of slow I think he realized that um, yeah there definitely was a rescue stretcher in hand it's uh yeah he also attached an energy active which seems like a mistake she has double puzzle for uh, yeah Guzman on anything and then take the knockout so it didn't take really matter knockout. but attaching the energy active here was like it was a real trade-off because he had the fighting fear belt so uh, he couldn't attach a float so next turn but he also kind of needed the Guzma anyways um, so I think his thought process was okay I have to attach the fighting fear belt to get the maximum HP out of here um, yeah I think that uh, really well played by Rosa obviously it could be a little bit scary coming into this matchup for her knowing that obviously um, Stefan has the upper hand here, having weakness on her and a lot of the things that she has in her deck. However, Stefan losing a lot of tempo there, is Prism Star being knocked out fairly quickly, and Rosa really pulling ahead there. The trade ability really paid off, even though there was only one in the deck, she was al always able to keep up a lot more tempo, push Stefan forward, and be really aggressive with the draws that she had. Um, she can be really proud of how she played and managed her resources by having one puzzle prized. She actually drew into that at the last minute, obviously, going down to one prize, meaning that she finally then had a second chance to use double puzzle, grabbing what she needed at the discard. And that Gardevoir, as I said earlier in the game, became very strong and very powerful. As much as Gardevoir really is weak to metal, these metal Pokemon haven't become as good as they first were recognized to be so therefore Gardevoir is still a really powerful force in the format for one energy doing 30 damage for every energy attached to you and your opponent's Pokemon you know what a powerful card you just really can't deny the damage output on it yeah and now we see a completely new game so uh, Rosa was able to win the first game um, quite nice here but um, yeah Stefan still of course he can win the whole game 60 minutes um, in, there are two options for top cut either 60 50 or uh, 75 minutes that's actually three um, but here in this tournament there's a 60 minutes play which is not so popular because um, of course you want to have as much time as possible Stefan here actually starting with his dusk main necrosma um, one, one funny thing uh, now that I see it in the active spots uh, to mention is that the chance of um, the chance of having it thrive is actually a bit lower because it's a uh, um, because it's a basic Pokemon. So you usually have about 10% to price one of your non-basic Pokemon. But a basic Pokemon because it has a really high chance of being on your starting hand, all the non-basic hands get shuffled in. So it's actually like I think like 7% to uh, have this in their in your price card. So something to keep in mind um, as well which is just a funny thing <laughs> to notice here Stefan's first turn looking quite well now Rosa opening with an ultra ball yeah she also feel blurred that float stone off the Solgaleo prism star there um, really good move by her only one energy in Stefan's discard pile so far so obviously not enough in there to start taking advantage of that radiant star attack so he's gonna be disappointed there that he can't actually retreat that out next turn and use turbo arm However, this Ultra Ball coming down, we're most probably going to see that regular Bridget play, uh, as lots of these ROI decks do. Start getting those trades out, and start getting uh, at least one of those rolls down. However, Rose is looking through her deck now, and she'll probably notice pretty quickly that one of her rear candies are prized, making that Guard of War play slightly harder. She's not going to have the option as well, very early on, to get a Gallade out as well. She's going to have to pick between one or the other. As well as that, she's got one Puzzle Prize again. Yeah, it's also one of the last ones <laughs> as well. And here she just plays Ultra Ball, Wonder Take, Bridget. Um, yeah, just grabbing some bench Pokemon. She isn't, she isn't entirely sure if she should get all the Zoro R's in play or maybe a Rulz as well. Uh, it seems like she decided for three Zoruas <laughs> or not, <laughs> putting it back. Um, your first deck search, usually you also check for your prize cards. Uh, we can see them, so it's easy for us, but the players, of course, can only see their deck. They know all cards, so in theory they should all have the knowledge, but sometimes people uh, kind of mess up. So it's always... It would be perfect to know all your six prize cards, but because of the time limit, you usually can check for all of them. So you just go through the most important things. Um, 
and some players also like take notes for this um, but yeah this was a really really standard first turn I think yeah and another float stone comes down so he is actually able to move that uh, prism star of the active moving that Reggie steel up this turn which is going to be really important to him um, getting this uh, consistency going with the acceleration um, however looking at Stefan's prizes this time uh, he's got a field blower in there, uh, a Mew Face Collide, and obviously one of his Dust Main Necrozmas. Um, he plays a total of three of those, so he's still got two left in his deck, one on board right now. Uh, we didn't see all three of them come down until the third one came down very late in the game last game. We didn't have much of an eff effect on the overall match. So I think two's fine. He's not going to be too upset by one of them being prized. Yeah, he also actually plays three Nest Ball, so quite a lot. Uh, Nest Ball is usually a card that a lot of people play like as a one-off to... Yeah, gets for example like a Trabish or just another Pokemon additionally into play but he plays so many of them he just needs a bunch of Pokemon um, yeah not too sure what the um, not too sure what exactly happened here but um, and yeah, Stefan just attaching one energy card he can retreat into Regirock uh, Reggie Steel, of course, and attaching one energy card uh, from the discard pile. Yeah, uh, attaching one from the discard pile, two already on that Dust Main Necrozma. Uh, it really is impressive how quick this deck can ramp up. Obviously, with the same ability as that old Oblivion Wing Yveetle, that was always really strong when uh, Yveetle uh, EX was around. Obviously, putting out a lot of, lot of damage with that Evil Ball attack. And we got a very similar thing here in the turbo arm. Uh, not surprised that Stefan's playing this at all. 30 damage is good. Uh, 60 with a choice band as well as attaching an energy from the discard. Um, Reggie Steel, a really good suit for this uh, turbo metal deck. And perhaps even slightly more consistent than the Magnazone, which is why Stefan's opted to play it today. Yeah, and just Cynthia drawing six cards. Hmm. I don't think she already used trade, so she can even draw four cards here now. Uh, seeing the other Zorog, um, he, if she just has a double cost energy card, pretty sure that's all she wants. Um, again, Registry 130 HP, not being able to de uh, one it knocked out without playing a Kukui, which uh, Rosa doesn't use in her deck. Uh, yeah, let's see. It just trades twice, uh, draws some cards. If there is a double cost energy card there, just use Righteous Beating. It's very unlikely. Well, it's actually not too unlikely for Stefan. Uh, he could take the one and knock out here. Um, in, in the first game, he didn't use his GX attack at all. So he didn't wait until the Pokemon got knocked out because the situation allowed it for him. Um, let's see how this situation is going to play out. Yeah, so she does attach the DCE, so it does look like she's going to go for that right SB in attack. Uh, there we saw her discard the Mallow. Do you think Mallow uh, is a card that she's going to need in this matchup? It kind of depends. I, I think I would imagine Mallow is pretty nice to set up uh, Gallade <laughs> very early um, so you can just search your deck for rare candy Gallade um, get the Gallade out and once the Gallade is in play then you have all the draw power you need and the chance of getting Galibo as well is a lot higher and also Guzma I think Guzma is the most important card for Rosa in this matchup in general because she can always just get some damage on these half finished um, dust name Necrozmas Stefan here actually is cutting a poor pet, which is a card which uh, we've seen um, in, f in past formats, was almost never played. Again, it's not really that popular and Stefan just discarded it, not even use it. Um, but in Stefan's deck, I think also Guzma is quite important, which is why he needs a lot of them. He was able to take out the Ralts with the Metal Weakness and also attach one energy to the Dust Name Necrozma. So yeah, that's really, a really, really aggressive turn here. Yeah, really important turn there for Stefan. Obviously with that Dust Main Necrozma stacking more energy on it, he needs to try and keep that as safe as possible so he can take his prizes. But he knows that obviously while that Ralts is down, that Guard of War always poses a threat. It only needs a few energy to be able to knock out that Dust Main Necrozma with three energy on it. So it's really easy for Rosa to go ahead and do that. So it was really smart there for him to just Guzma up that Ralts, stopping from a Guard of War from being able to come down this turn, even if Rosa really had all the pieces to do so. Uh, we do see a Bridget now for two more Ralts, knowing that that really is her overall game plan and how she's going to end up winning this game. Um, as much as these Guard of Wars have Fairy Weakness, as I said in the break, the damage output is too strong. 
Stefan knows that. Rosa knows that. So she needs to revolve a game plan around that Gardevoir still. And also, this game is looking really uh, different from the first one because Stefan can just use Reggie's deal to set up and his um, prison star, Solgaleo, doesn't have any damage. So um, Rosa is now able to take a knockout, but not on the prison star. So the prison star is always something which is really problematic to come into play and in the first game because she was able to just take a lot of two hit knockouts the Gardevoir wasn't that important but now Rosa knows she needs to have at some point to get like a one hit knockout on a uh, powered um, Dusty and Necrozma before it's able to attack so now it's really important for her to set up Gardevoir and Stefan did already uh, do his best to prevent that you if he's able to find this? another Guzma he can either just take out another Ralt or this time just go for um, an attack with the Necrozma. His bench is looking really big, so probably um, he can... He, ha he has a lot of options here. I wouldn't... Um, I don't want to assume what he does. Here we see just using um, Professor Sycamore, discarding an N. Now his bench is quite full, there's no space for Or Oranguru, which is really nice in this matchup, especially because the Zorak player can just play like N a lot of times. Um, yeah, so that was right. a sleeve from Stefan, uh, which ripped, so he has to replace it now. Uh, Rosa, with a keen eye, spotting this, like, here, your sleeve is broken, please switch that out, and... And of course, Stefan obliges. Um, don't want to damage that card at all in the sleeve either, so that goes back into the deck. Uh, great job there from Rosa and our judge as well, spotting that. Um, it looks as if here... The only other really um, nerving thing for Rosa here is obviously that GX attack can still come into play and do a whole 250 damage. Uh, if Stefan does opt to take two prizes here, it only takes Rosa, you know, two prizes to go back down to the same level. Essentially, that GX attack could end up becoming the overall finisher for this game and 250 damage there's nothing that Rosa can do can, to combat that there's nothing she can do to play around it 250 is just too high yeah also now the Dustin and Necrozma is quite safe in this position it had to discard all of the uh, three of the four energy cards attached Zorak GX now in the active spot again Rosa just ne really needing a double colors energy card maybe something uh, like a, another Zorak, which we might see now. I know there's one Zorak in the prize cards too. Uh, one, in, one in play, one in the discard pile. I didn't pay too much attention. Here's the last one now also in play. Putting more, um, yeah, more force behind these traits. Um, and Rosa just checking her deck. <laughs> Again, she just really wants to make sure that uh, whatever she had planned for us is still working, uh, even with the prize cards. Yeah, I think here we're starting to head into the same sort of situ we, situation we had in our other top um, eight match. Rosa won game up, there's only 14 minutes left, and Stefan's taken a lot more of his prize cards. Uh, we could go to a game three here, or we could go to another sudden death, depending on how this game pays out in the middle uh, at the end of it. Uh, that Prism Star Solgaleo still able to have a huge amount of acceleration in this game. Uh, but it all depends how quickly Stefan's able to get that Dustmane Necrozma back out of the active. My heart is not able to take another sudden death. I just want Rosa to win. <laughs> um, yeah, but this turn here, I, I still I still believe having the Gallade is really important. Um, but she plays two puzzles for a double color entry card and an N. Like already said, there is no Oranguru on Stefan's bench this turn. So N is a lot stronger than it would usually be. Um, yeah, here we see just the end coming down. Five cards for Rosa, three for Stefan. If she, if he is not able to get the Sogaleo out of the active spot, that's really good for Rosa. So N is a quite strong play here. Uh, I think she only used one trade, um, and the second one is still able to be used. Now she's not able to use double puzzle anymore at all because, like we already said, her last prize card is actually um, one of the puzzles. And yeah, she basically just needs to attack. Of course, if she draws really well, she can uh, put some other cards down, uh, but nothing too important here as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, she's still able to take the two shot here. Uh, she is outputting 100 damage. Obviously, only one bench Pokemon missing at the minute. So that's still two shotting. Obviously, she'd need to find another basic if she wanted to two shot it. Otherwise, um, 
but we see the fairy energy coming down possibly on this Ralts. I was just wondering, like, she, she already attached active to the Double Colors energy card. Um, like, there was a Zorak last turn with Double Colors active, that got knocked out, she attached the Double yeah. Colors energy card. Um, so she's not able to attach the fairy energy. <laughs> I, w I was getting ready to run, but yeah, the judge also just was like, yeah, I know you're thinking about doing this, but you can't. So, um, yeah, quite good here, just the 100 damage, um, everything she wants. Now Stefan needs to have a quite good hand, and here we see a floatstone. We see him get the uh, floatstone. So he definitely wants to have the floatstone. Now an another energy would be amazing as well. Otherwise, he just has to put some kind of scapegoat active. And here we actually see this play. Just retreat for Tapu Lele pass. Rosa, if she's able to get a Guzma, uh, she can make full potential out of this. Then Stefan, of course, would have another bench uh, slot. So if he has an Ultra Ball in his hand or an S Ball, he can use a Ranguru. Um, yeah, I think we're in a position now where Rosa needs to start picking up a lot of tempo to try and get herself in this game. She's now got the opportunity. We've seen Stefan's deck's weakness start to appear here, which is its n ability not to be able to draw that many cards. Obviously, Oranguru being its only real draw power, and without, being, without that on the field, he's not even able to do that. So unfortunately, his deck is starting to show its true colors here, and really starting to creep backwards from that aggression he showed in the early games and it just means that now with these trade abilities rose has got a chance to try and claw her way back in and take some more prizes this turn using a guzma it would also be really nice here if she's able to set up a Gallade, starting to use that premonition to help her draw even better she does just draw the rear candy here as well uh it depends whether she has an ultra ball though to get these uh evolution pokemon in play she also got a, a tapu Lele, so if she wants to take the knockout here she can use wonder tag then put Ross active there's only one retreat cost, so she can just retreat it. Losing one energy card probably isn't hurting too much. Of course, uh, she can't attach the double colors energy card anymore. And you can see um, she's playing really well, but not perfect, I would say. So, for example, she attached the energy before she used trade, which doesn't really matter too much, of course. But in these kind of situations, even if you already decided, yeah, I will play 100%, I will play this fairy energy card, the experienced players just do trade first just in case maybe they forgot something and then they see the other option in unfolding once they see um the two cards coming from top of the deck and having this um like proper i don't want to say proper order because it usually doesn't really matter anyways um oh, actually, she puts this uh yeah let's <laughs> let's just wait what's happening here uh so she puts tapu lele active she puts does tapu she have lele a active. Yeah. yeah she, she has, has the float stone so this way she can save her all, um the energy card so that would have been here. a misplay otherwise i was very worried there for rosa that she'd made the wrong choice without that float stone very worrying there for a second um however yes as you were saying david uh, those two energies remain on ralt which again starts to pose that pressure from god of war that's 60 damage already from infinite force if it's there it's also two energy to be able to use sensitive blade which outputs 130 damage a turn so that Gallade is also looking a pretty strong card here as well yeah, now Stefan, mm, weird spot, <laughs> um, he needs a dust name, Necrozma, an energy card. His hand does not look good, I think they're, yeah, a field blower and I think maybe a rescue stretcher, oh, a rescue which stretcher is, is fine. pretty if he has an perfect energy card, for him. But he has to go for Tafelele. Um So the Cobalion is on the bench, which deals 30 more damage for each press yes, card the opponent yes. has taken, so right now should be 120 damage um that's at least enough to take uh, one hit knockout on a guard of war once it hits the field but rosa knowing this and also knowing that stefan's bench is completely full now probably will just not re evolve into guard of war now i'm pretty sure definitely the galate is the um, better choice in this situation so really not looking great for stefan also he's down one game uh, yeah just reveals the professor sycamore oh yeah, I think Rose is really in a strong situation there. Uh, by waiting a minute just to evolve that Ralts, uh, the Glade now seems a really good option. As we said, that Premonition allowing her to get whatever cards she really needs uh, access to. And as well as that, uh, being able to use that Sensitive Blade attack for 130, that's outputting slightly more than Zoroark, and obviously a one prize Pokemon as well. Yeah, so a uh, Mixed Elixir coming down, attaching a Metal Energy card 
from uh, the deck to Sol Galeo. So in theory he could have also taken a Dust Name Necrozma with the Rescue Stretcher, but that would have left his hand completely without supporter cards. So it would have been quite risky. Um, might have been worth to take the risk, but Stefan did decide to not take it, just go for the safe route here. Um, using Radiant Star and uh, start charging up his Pokemon. He can attach two Metal Energy Active, one on the bench. Um, there are six in total from Rosa, so he can even attach more energy, some to the Tapulele, maybe one to Mew, um, a bunch of options. But before that, he goes to uh, Fighting Fury, but he still hasn't attached an energy from his hand as well. So here we see it uh, going to the Mew. If he just wants to use Radiant Star, he might think about attacking with Mew, but 160 HP on the Solgaleo pretty much ensures that it won't get knocked out. And here we see it, um, 3 energy on Mew, 2 active, so with one hand attachment. In theory, he can use the second attack from uh, Solgaleo Prism Star, which is 160 damage if he wants to, but he doesn't commit too much. Um, so one energy less for Rosa in theory to be able to knock it out. But Rosa really doesn't want to um, take the knockout here with the Gardevoir, if I'm correctly, because then Stefan, he gets one bench slot, he can attach one energy to Mew and then take the knockout. Um, yeah, but he doesn't even need an extra energy as well, because then he could actually use the GX attack from uh, Sogaleo. So, um, really, really good position uh, where... Stefan is in here, uh, even though it didn't really look that well um, anyways, with so much energy in play. And now Rosa really has to think about uh, what she's doing. Yeah, I think here as well, that really shows off. I think the only way to describe it is disgusting. How disgusting that Radiant Star attack is. It's honestly so powerful when your opponent's board is for six energy. You know, Nitro Tank is a GX attack that allows someone to get five from the discard. Radiant Star allowing you to use it more than once, and up to six. Ridiculous there, completely changing the board state. And Rosa now actually looks on the back foot here, due to just that absolute swinging turn there from Solgaleo Prism Star, bringing all those energy back on board, and allowing him now to have two attackers that can start taking knockouts. Uh, that Ralts really needs to evolve into the Gallade soon to allow Rosa to have more in an advantage here. Otherwise, she could be in trouble. We see the Guard of War in her hand. Will she opt to go for the Guard of War and take the knockout here? And just hope that Stefan can't take the last one prize after possibly knocking out that Guard of War. Yeah, this is a really interesting board state because Rosa has three prize cards left. So she could in theory knock out one Tapu Leila and then whatever, like a Mew or something. The Mew could also be knocked out by one of Rosa's uh, Tapu Leilas, which isn't a good thing to do now, especially because she used Field Blower, so the Sogaleo Prison Star with a Fighting Fury Belt is also able to take a knockout on um, a Tapu Lele as well. So Rosa has a few different options here. Um, if she just... Ah, uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, she, she might have, she might play N just to put Stefan in a, we a weak hand uh, once more and then take the turret knockout. Stefan just needs an energy, he can use uh, Chroma Impact, in theory he can even uh, retreat um, if he doesn't have an energy and then attack with um, the Cobellion, which could put him uh, further to a turret knockout. Now it really depends on what he would draw after an end, so this is the end option. The other option Rosa has is to play Guzma on Mew, then just knock it out, um, going down to two prize cards. Um, Additionally, she could also knock out the Cobellion. I don't really think knocking out the Cobellion here is a really strong play because then Mew is still in play and Stefan can just put down a um, Necrozma, use the GX attack, and then he, he again is in a really strong position. So a lot of options here and Rosa also realizing that this game is really complicated at this point. Yeah, I think that uh, there's one point that needs to be raised here that uh, obviously that Mew will have access to Solgaleo's, Solgaleo's GX attack if Rosa does take a prize here. So perhaps the smarter option is in fact to knock out that Mew, taking away that GX attack option from Stefan in order to just take a big swing for his last prizes. 
on anything that he wants. Um, one thing that we have been asked by the Twitch chat though, uh, I'll ask you David, as you are the super judge here, how exactly does this prize rule work and will this go to a game three or sudden death at this point? Uh, how exactly does this sudden death rule work in game two? Um, you have to draw more than 50% of your prize card, so one of these players has to draw any prize at all. Um, yeah, then if it's if it if it's uh, if it finishes in game two, and one of these players draws a prize card, they look who drew more prize cards after the third extra turn, and then this person wins the game. So, for example, if Stefan is able to uh, win this game here, and time is called between games or in this game even, it would be a sudden death, and there Stefan also just has the upper hand because um, he can use. Reggie steal to just knock out the Rults or to knock out a um, Zorua. <laughs> you got there, uh, you got there. Depending you're, on you're doing uh, it. how it is. Now Stefan uses the Chroma Impact to get 160 damage on the um, Zorak. The attack says next turn he can't attack, but it doesn't really matter that much because Rosa either takes the knockout or plays Guzma. And in both cases he could attack with Sorgaleo again. Now Rosa kind of needs to, um, yeah, retreat probably to not attack with Zorak. She plays Max Potion. I don't know if she. She discarded has. it earlier on. I'm yeah, he sure. discarded it. Um, so no access to it. I, I'm not sure how it looks like on the Puzzle of Time front. <laughs> so in theory, um, this is an option. But I think she also played double puzzle early on this game for N and double cast energy card. And we see one is priced. So. This isn't possible. She just uses trade once. Um, she also having doesn't another double color energy card, so she can retreat. Yeah, she also card. doesn't play an Ace Aurora in here or anything like that. So that Zoroark is going to remain with that amount of damage on it. Uh, that could be Stefan's wink on here. Coming down to only 30 seconds left. Uh, both players with three prize cards here. However, if Rosa takes this knockout here, she goes down to less prize cards, which from what you said earlier means that she would win this game at the end of time yeah well it depends on like um, the last three extra turns Stefan of course oh, yes, if he of has course. a Guzma for example he can use the um, Rebellion second attack Revenge Blast I, I think it's called um, for the knockout on the Zorak then draw two prize cards so now really interesting position we have to watch <laughs> the judge when he said it's actually a uh, time out yeah it should be about and soon. that is time looks like it's time now yeah <laughs> the judge is like yo time so now, uh, extra turn zero. And Rose is really lucky that she finished the turn there and passed over to Stefan, because if that turn zero ended on her turn, she would have only had one extra turn to obviously close out her side of the game. However, Stefan is the turn zero, meaning both our players here get options. And of course, the nest ball comes down for the Dustman, and she is able to absolutely blast that Zoroark out of the active spot with that Sun's Eclipse GX. A whopping 210 damage coming off that. I think that's the highest um, amount of damage we've ever had written on a card. Oh, he attached another energy to the active Mew. Uh, so, yeah, so, he uses the GX attack 250 uh, with resistance, still 230. Um, enough, I think. And um, he attached a fourth energy. So, if Rosa. Uh, attack with top lead, it's a knockout anyway, so the energy doesn't matter. But this way, if uh, Rosa plays N and Stefan doesn't draw an energy, he can still take the knockout on almost everything. Also, the Revenge Blast will take a knockout on, on all Pokémon. Rosa cannot draw a single prize, so now because of the weird situation here with the extra time, I think Rosa's only r proper winning option is play Lysander, on the um, Necro uh, I mean Guzma, yes, uh, play Guzma on the um, Dustin Necrozma, then just pass. Then it's the second extra turn for Stefan. If he's not able to take a, a knockout, then it's back to Rosa again, and yeah, then she could take the potential to a knockout on the um, Necrozma. So I think this is the only uh, winning option here. Not sure how many Guzmas are where, um, and also it doesn't really matter too much. Um, what else she has going if Stefan would be able to draw the Guzma afterwards that's it so this is what I'm seeing maybe Rosa sees a different winning option here um, yeah let's see what it comes down to yeah I think you're definitely right there uh, David I think that 
the only real way she can do this is just stalling him out for that last turn. Obviously, she knows that Stefan's only got one more turn. She only has to worry about that turn. There's no point thinking further than that. She just needs to get past that last one. And obviously, with a big retreat cost of three on that Dust Mane Necrozma, seems like her best option. Stefan's hand seemed quite dead for a lot of the game. However, some late supporter cards there has got uh, his hand back up to a reasonable size. However, is there an energy there? I haven't seen one. I haven't seen his hand fully. Um, there's four on that Mew, two on that Cabalion, and there's going to be uh, at least four in the discard pile off of that Prism Star that got knocked out last turn. It really depends here on whether he's got energy. Obviously, there's a total of 14 in his deck, I believe. Um, up to at least 10 combining that Prism Star, the Mew, and the Cabalion. Okay, uh, she used her trait. I thought I thought she had her Ultra Ball in her hand, so she could have used Ultra Ball for Gallade, then Rare Candy into it. Um, if she takes a knockout with... It, so right now, Cobalion only needs 150 damage, but if she takes a knockout on the active Mew, that would be uh, enough to knock out every Pokemon in play now. So the Tapu Lele would be knocked out, um, because yeah, then it's 180. Um, the Zorok, of course, already got damage. Um, if she evolves into Gallade, that's also then it's even 150 is enough. And um, the Gardevoir has a weakness. So here we see Rare Candy coming down. Actually evolving Gardevoir into Gardevoir, does she have out. the Guzma? Um, Guzma is, I, I really think it's the only option here. Um, yeah, let's take a look at her hand. Uh, not sure how many Guzmas she already played. Um, on her deck list, there are two Guzma in two it. Only two Guzma, and he has. And uh, she, she does has play it. Yes. She does play but the Guzma. Actually, on a Tapu Lele, so for one energy, Stefan can retreat. Um, oh, she could be going for the is full she, is swing she able here. To have enough? Uh, does she have enough energy even? If she has a double colors energy card and a choice band, that's is enough. So she has Secret Spring. You may start your she has not does used Secret Spring yet. You may start your and Stefan has a Guzma, and that's it. So, oh, we go to sudden death again. Sudden death again. No, I don't, uh, I don't know if I can take this. Uh, my heart is pounding. Uh, really, really well played there at the end from Stefan, though. That Solgaleo Prism Star really showing its worth in that matchup. Getting six energy back on board. Uh, Rosa thought she had game there. Really thought she pushed him right back into a corner. Really threatening a lot with either that Gallade or Gardevoir being able to come into play. However, Stefan clawed it back using that Rising Star attack. Yeah, um, so... <laughs> She, if, if she would have had the double card energy card and the choice band, this is what I what I didn't see. Like I explained, uh, the one which uh, one option was just Guzma and Stall. But of course, if she had the double card energy card, uh, because there were already two energy uh, and the choice band, that would be uh, six energy. So one, 180, <laughs> yes, um, for the knockout on the Tapu Lele as well. But um, she just had to um, get something active. Hope that Stefan doesn't have the Guzma. Um, also. What um, I also didn't say properly is like the, uh, the Gardevoir has 230 HP. So if he had just one energy to retreat, it still wouldn't have been enough. He, he would have needed um, an energy and a Fighting Fury belt. So um, yeah, this is the other the other option uh, or just a Floats on a Fighting Fury belt. I'm not entirely sure how many uh, Fighting Fury belts were already in the Discord pile. He only placed two in his list, at least one which got Field Blowered earlier. Uh, but yeah, Sudden Death now. Um, really similar to what we have we had in the first game so we have one player with Oranguru in his deck and the other one with Zorak um, let's see who goes first who gets a good um, start with maybe an N maybe something uh, else or just a lot of Bridget Zorua uh, like we saw Tort using in Tort situation it didn't really use uh, make sense to play N because of the Oranguru uh, with the opponent started with and now we see uh, Stefan's seven hand cards and yeah, I think let's go into it. I think here we've got a very similar sudden death than we that we had in the first game. Stefan's deck able to just move forward really quickly, get those elixirs on board, get the power up really quick, and of course the worst thing here would be for Rosa to start Ralts and Stefan to start Reggie Steel. Well, we see a Ralts and we in see the Ralts in hand. Uh, oh, she puts the Ralts down. Yeah, um, it really depends on how her hand is looking. She has the Tapu Lele. Uh, she actually put six prize cards. <laughs> um, yeah, it's only supposed to be one. 
uh, the judge will just take one of those out at random, I'm sure, and just put it on the prize board by there that we set up for her. It's the rear candy, candy comes down. Crucial. And, and Stefan starts with tapu the Tapu Lele. Lele. Rosa goes first, she, she has Lele in hand, but this is still like um, playing end so early, it's still a risk because you have like no board position. And if your opponent just gets the supporter cards, you kind of put yourself in a gamble. So uh, she doesn't have Sorua in play. She has a Sycamore, she has one energy which she could attach um, to the active one, not doing too much. So um, I still think here, however, Stefan plays three Tapu Lele. Uh, one of them's already in the active. Uh, I think N here is still probably the right play. Well, um, I, would, I, would, I would think N should be the right play if she has Sorua in her in, in play. Because then next turn she needs Evo Soda or um, a Zoro Arc. An Ultra Ball would not get her there because she wouldn't have enough hand cards to use it immediately. Um, if she uses N, she really needs to be entirely sure that she has better options to draw out of it properly uh, compared to Stefan. So looking at the consistency card, Stefan, like you already said, two Layla left. The Ultra Ball doesn't get you the supporter immediately, but it would still be quite a nice out to draw. Um, he has two Thymphia, two N, which isn't really a consistency card in this scenario, so he has 6 supporter, 10, 12 cards to draw from, but he only draws 1, so like 12 out of 50, so kind of about like 1 out of 5. Um, Rosa can take the 1 out of 5 gamble, but she also does it for herself, so um, well, only, kind of problematic. My only worry here would be, obviously she has played the N, but my only worry there would be, Stefan needs a really easy 3 card combo for him. Um, he plays the Reggie Steel, he plays 14 energy, and all he would need was two energy and a Reggie Steel, retreat that Lele, and then just tap that Ralts for a knockout, winning the game. I think that the end was always the right play there. Um, completely unable now to pull off that combo unless he just top decks a draw support. I didn't see what she got. And now she just retreats into the Tapu Lele, of course, not wanting to get the Ralts knocked out. And Stefan's hand is an energy and something else. Is it the supporter? No, it's not. It's now it's not. Rosa's turn again. She has an Ultra Ball. So next she turn she can ball. get another Layla. What does Stefan has? He has a Net ball. ball. Not really what he wants. Um, but now Rosa can But if the other card... If it's a supporter, of course, that's amazing. But uh, I didn't see it. And he had the Nest Ball earlier. Now he has an Orangu. Oh, he got the Orangu, yeah, of course, totally going for that. Didn't think about that. Uh, so he allowing gets him to draw two. Card. Um, this also puts his... Um, yeah, because I didn't... Uh, think about the Ranguru earlier, this puts his overall chances, of course, a bit higher as well, but Rosa is able to get a... Um, to get uh, Tapu Lele next turn as well. Stefan, if he gets Guzma, Richie Steel, Energy, <laughs> that's, that's game. He draws three now, and let's see, one, two, three, Flowstone, Energy, and what is the last card? Nest Another ball. Nest ball, so... Not exactly what he needs to win right now, but Rosa would need a lot of cards now uh, to make her hand uh, great as well. And Stefan only really needs a Guzma. Now Rosa getting kind of punished to bench the second Ralts, but it's still really unlikely to evolve either of them. So just putting it down first for the consistency was probably um, the better call. And yeah, Stefan is able to attach an energy. He can still retreat and then just attach it to something else. Rosa now with her Ultra Ball for um, Tapu Lele, probably Cynthia or Professor Sick. Yeah, Professor Sycamore is not the Sycamore prize, here to so get you can the just most. get it. Um, seven cards. She can't win this turn, but she can. Like if she's really lucky, <laughs> she evolves both of her rods. <laughs> um, yeah, not really likely. Uh, we will just see. Uh, well, oh, one of those rare candies are prized. How many does she actually play could in her list? Three. three rare candy. She could. She did draw both her rare candy. <laughs> she has. I think she has. She has one uh, Gardevoir in a set in her hand. Uh, yeah. Still. I think and that's. I think that's a rare candy in her hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Wait, yeah. I thought what? so. I think she's drawn both sure? her. Rare, yeah. I think so. Okay. Let's let's wait. If she gets delayed and. <laughs> I think okay, she's drawn wait, them both. Uh, this is a really. Ah, uh, we can't be 100% sure, but she can, in theory, get both of them. Oh, uh, let's wait for this. This would be... I, I want to see Stefan's face when she is just like, Oh, she gets a Tapu Lele with the Ultra Ball. Oh, so, no, it's only the one. Only the one rare candy. Okay, yeah, fair enough. 
Uh, yeah, I really want to Layla like again, to getting herself a supporter for the next turn as well. Very smart for her, just allowing her to get that supporter and obviously thin another card out of her deck. But I'm not entirely sure how well it is because Symphria and Tapu Layla, these are not cards you want to thin out, these are cards you want to have in your deck if your opponent plays N. And Stefan, he can probably kind of confidently play N. He has the Oranguru, so um, he has a better chance. There is still no Zorua in play for Rosa, and uh, Stefan just needs Guzma at any point of this game to win um, and also an the ultra ball comes down again. so now three cards ultra ball Lele Guzma nothing nothing again. Stefan so misses one, again one extra turn for Rosa and not not even an end for Stefan so uh, we know her hand is quite strong um, and misses his elixir absolutely shocking there for Stefan he's not going to be happy about that missing his wing con and also missing elixir with a hefty amount of energy still left in his deck those elixirs should be pretty easy to hit um really coming down to the wire here uh, rose is probably feeling very nervous right now uh hoping she can hit some stuff off of this cynthia in the next turn uh, she's probably looking for quite a few energy to put onto that gardevoir so Stefan is considering to attach the fighting through bed to the Reggie steel, so um, it doesn't really it doesn't get knocked out. So Rosa can also there's a three card combo she needs to win, which is double colors energy card, fairy energy, and a Guzma. Um, I don't really think she has any of them. She didn't attach an energy earlier, so probably we will just see Cynthia. And um, yeah, she hopes to evolve <laughs> uh, the Guzma. Uh, I don't think she plays Parallel City. Oh, she actually plays one Parallel City, so if she gets a Parallel City now, she can get rid of the Ralts. Uh, that would be really, really important for her. Um, yeah, let's see what her hands... She will probably, yeah, like I already said, just play Cynthia. She's just going through all of her options. She goes for Guzma. Dra dragging the Regis in active, getting some damage on. So now once again, Stefan, he can draw probably three cards um, with his Orangu once again. And let's see if there is a Guzma this time. No Guzma, but the second one. Oh, there's yeah. a Guzma. And that is the game. Rosa disappointed there. Um, she had the Guzma the next turn as well. Um, well played there from Stefan. I think that we really have to congratulate Rosa there. She played absolutely excellently, going into a matchup that really didn't seem likely for her to get anything out of. Uh, such good acceleration there from a metal deck, and obviously pretty much a direct counter to her deck. Um, that Solgaleo Prism Star really showing its value. Uh, Rosa's really got to be proud of herself. Um, top eight at Prague Special Championships at such a young age, and of course doing so well against this deck that most people would have felt really intimidated to sit across in the top eight match. As you know, it's not too nice to hit almost an auto loss in like this hot, this far in the tournament. Yeah, it's not so not so cool. Uh, it's not really an auto loss. It's quite a hard matchup, of course. She won like one of the games. Um, she had quite good options uh, with her Zor arc. The very last game was. A roller coaster. <laughs> yes, my heart was up and down yeah, the whole turn, time. Turn I, yeah. one Layla for N. Uh, she got the ultra ball. Then um, Stefan got the uh, nest ball for the Oranguru. Being able to draw, just not getting the Guzma. But then in the very last and very important turn, uh, he was actually able to grab it. Um, yeah, at this point, I would like to say he has four Guzma in his deck, and also he had the four ultra ball left. So it was really likely at all times for him to get it. Uh, but in the end, it turned out well. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think that obviously both times that Oranguri proven very, very, uh, very fruitful in the yeah, sudden death situation. Uh, N being the most important card, but overall that Oranguri showing value and Metal Deck comes on top. Something that we haven't really expected. Uh, the Metal not living up to its value so far since we're releasing Ultra Prism, but perhaps we could see it go all the way today. Yeah, um, we can just ask Stefan how he thinks about this deck and uh, get some professional coaching here. Uh, so see you later. Of course, we'll see you guys. Uh, winner's interview up next. Uh, don't go anywhere.